Uh, thank you. I have uh, no relevant disclosures. So I'll be talking about uh, type B dissections, uh, so distal to the left subclavian, as we all know. So we can break these down into uncomplicated and complicated. So uncomplicated account for about 55%. And traditionally, the uh, teaching has been medical management, so that's with strict uh, blood pressure, heart rate control, and surveillance. Uh, com complicated comes in a, you know, a bunch of varieties, uh, including rupture, visceral, extremity malperfusion aneurysm or patients that have uh, persistent ongoing pain. And typically, the, uh, and still the teaching is um, and the data is to uh, treat these patients with a T-VAR and then any sort of adjunctive procedures to treat the ischemia or malperfusion afterwards. So um, I think really the kind of interesting area of dissections is the quote unquote gold standard of these uncomplicated type B dissections is uh, you know, when to treat them, because about 20 to 50% of these patients uh, with uncomplicated type B dissections will uh, go on to have uh, aortic-related uh, complications, including ruptures, um, aneurysms, uh, and so forth. And so identifying those patients is, uh, is critical. So what are the uh, kind of goals of therapies for these uncomplicated dissections? It's really to uh, promote aortic remodeling uh, by a really false lumen thrombosis to prevent aneurysms and rupture. So I think a, kind of a good summary of uh, kind of this ongoing uh, re research in areas. So I have this 63-year-old uh, female. She initially presented with three days of worsening chest and back pain. Uh, came in pretty, you know, in typical fashion with hypertensive uh, ongoing chest pain. So we got a CTA. So here you can see what actually looks like a thrombose uh, dissection versus intramural hematoma that starts at the subclavian and goes all the way down to her celiac. So this would be defined as an uncomplicated uh, pathology. So she was treated conservatively with blood pressure control. Her pain actually got better. Uh, but then one month later, she came on with chest pain, came back with a chest pain, which I knew was a, a concerning sign. And here you can see a uh, left pleural fusion. Um, as well as kind of uh, this kind of flow back into her false lumen versus like a little saclear uh, aneurysm there. So she, uh, she was taken, she was hemodynamically stable. Uh, so she was taken for a carotid subclavian bypass because that uh, went to her left subclavian, uh, followed by a T-VAR um, and angio with IVUS. And so here are just some just photos. You can see the amplatzer plug in the carotid subclavian bypass. And here's a little, a better view of that. And so I think we used a Cook Alpha here. And we extended down to the celiac, uh, you know, the full extent of her unhealthy aorta. So um, the, you know, the key is really to identify which patients require uh, intervention. So there's been some trials. So the INSTEAD trial um, looked at TVAR versus best medical management. And at two years, they uh, failed to show kind of any survival or um, kind of adverse event uh, improvement with TVAR compared to medical management. Then uh, after that, the instead XL trial came out looking at, uh, I believe, five years, and they actually did see a uh, improved aortic uh, specific mortality. So compared to uh, best medical therapy, uh, TVAR um, had a 6.9% aorta, aorta specific mortality uh, versus 19.3%. And I think even more kind of striking is the remodeling, which was almost 80% uh, with TVAR versus just medical therapy. The ABSORB trial was another um, uh, research uh, paper that came out, which did show uh, long-term favorable outcomes with uh, endovascular management using TVAR compared with best medical therapy. So all these trials kind of beg the question, so which patients uh, do we treat that are uncomplicated? There's been a number of uh, studies that have come out, and even the SVS has posted some guidelines. And so these are kind of the, the risk factors that we, we think um, may promote uh, degeneration over time of these type B dissections. So the number of vessels originating from the false lumen, uh, aortic diameter over four centimeters. So I think that's a big one, and that's something that I use when, I, when a patient initially comes in with an uncomplicated type B dissection. Uh, large false lumen, a large entry tear over uh, 10 millimeters, refractory pain I think is a good sign, uh, pleural effusion, uh, entry tear in the lesser curvature, and then uh, a patent false lumen or a partially thrombosed uh, false lumen versus a uh, completely thrombosed false lumen. 
So I think uh, when you know you see these patients coming acutely, these are some things that you should look at carefully in the CAT scan to decide uh, whether to treat them. I also think the other uh, extremely important uh, caveat to that is when to treat them. So dissections can be divided into time periods. Um, Hyperacute, acute one to you know, within two weeks, subacute uh, to up to 90 days, and chronic. And really, again, this is a fine balance. So patients that come in in the acute phase, um, one of the kind of dreaded complications we worry about with TVAR is a retrograde dissection uh, with that fresh kind of dissection and tear in the aorta. And so those patients, you know, unless they have some sort of acute complication, really it should be uh, managed medically if possible for the first two weeks. Uh, on the other end of that spectrum, though, is those patients with chronic disease. So they, their uh, dissection and kind of septum starts to get more rigid and it may not... Um, uh, expand as well. So if you've ever seen these dissections on IVIS when you first uh, place these stents grafts, um, in the beginning it's very mobile flap and then when you, you know, look at it months apart it's really kind of a fixed flap. So finding that balance is, uh, is, is key and I think you know right now the subacute period has been shown to be the most promising with the kind of best of both worlds. And of course we want to treat patients with a good life expectancy because uncomplicated dissections were really uh, talking about years in terms of the survival benefit based on the data we have. Um, surgical management of aortic dissections, um, just briefly, you know, as uh, Dr. McKinsey and everyone talked about, um, these are much more morbid procedures with higher rates of complications, so you really need a, a good risk candidate. I would say a lot of times now it's uh, reserved for failed endovascular management, so if they have a persistent endoleak uh, after an EVAR or TVAR, um, if there's some sort of extremity malperfusion, so in a hybrid approach, so they come in with a type B dissection and you place a T-VAR and, uh, you know, the uh, malperfusion to extremity doesn't improve, some of us will do a fem fem bypass. Um, and then obviously chronic dissections with thoracoabdominal aneurysms uh, as well. So this is another case uh, that was a little more involved. So it was a 72-year-old. She actually came in initially... Uh, about five, ten years back with a type B dissection. <clears throat> um, she ultimately got a type A dissection and was treated with a total arch replacement um, as well as visceral debranching for a kind of a rupture in her aorta. So that was done in the remote past. She was lost to follow up for about ten years and then she came back with a intermittent chest pain. So here you can see on your CAT scan the uh, total arch there and then what was left of their, her native uh, proximal descending aorta. And then uh, this is where they did the debranching uh, farther down. So here you can see this kind of large um, kind of saccular aneurysm and ulcer, uh, which was symptomatic. So for this patient, uh, we took her for a T-VAR. Um, so here's her aortogram. And so here we uh, deployed a, a Cook Alpha just basically up to her um, arch or her arch vessels. And so we actually had a good seal. So she was, she did well for a year and then uh, a year later after that she came back with a new CT fi CTA findings of these uh, horrible looking aneurysms in her, her visceral segment from the debranching site. Um, so clearly she has some, some underlying undiagnosed uh, connective tissue disorder. And I think that's kind of, you know, one of the things that uh, we can look forward to uh, kind of research more into these patients, identifying genetic um, predispositions that may uh, promote these degenerations over time. So, so she was referred for an open repair. And here's just an angiogram showing that. Um, so in conclusion, I think uncomplicated uh, type B dissections even though the uh, traditional treatment has been conservative management, up to 50% will degenerate uh, with aortic-specific related uh, morbidity and mortality. So I think identifying high-risk features and factors uh, should be considered uh, before deciding to intervene. Um, TVAR in the subacute setting has been shown to be done safely and can provoke uh, favorable aortic remodeling. Thank you.